If you're not doing intraarticular injections in your clinic, I highly recommend you do. They're a big fun part of what I get to do. I like getting these done and, and feeling that I can get fluid out. I can be a diagnostician. Of course, I can send these to the lab if I need to. But also, if I get that fluid out, it's kind of like popping a big pimple. You just get some relief. But we need to put something in there to be our targeted anti-inflammatory. I always do this with Lurilox syringes in the vast majority of the time, a 22-gauge needle. They're always sedated. They're an outpatient basis. You can use fluoro uh, if you have it, but honestly, if you just get joint fluid out, you know you're in the joint. But remember the goal with a joint injection is strictly to make the joint feel better for a period of time, no matter what we put in. But if we can get the joint feeling better, we now have to attack that patient's lack of strength. So we need exercise. We need to attack their obesity. So we need a diet plan and work on that. Because where you'll get quote unquote failures of your joint injections is when the patient still has a BCS of nine out of nine, right? We're still putting so much wear and tear on those joints. If you're injecting elbows, you can go laterally. I prefer to go medially, just the way I was trained. If you're going to aspirate these, so what I do is I walk off the needle off the medial epicondyle. I fall right into that joint space. And then I use a 6cc syringe lure lock to aspirate back. This gives me the right amount of vacuum pressure on that viscous joint fluid. If you use a TB or a 3cc, you won't generate enough vacuum to pull the joint fluid through, and you won't know if you're in the joint or not. This is what that looks like. So sometimes I have an assistant to break open the joint for me. So I'll feel the medial epicondyle. I always check with my techs first. I never stab a joint without my text permission. We know where all the patient's ready to go. And in we go, and here's our 6cc syringe. You can see we get out some joint fluid. Sometimes it's about a half cc. Depending on the size of the dog, sometimes we'll get more out. A little stringy viscosity to that there. And then I'll attach whatever product I'm injecting. In this case, this is Synovitin OA, which is that radioisotope, that radionuclide. And I'm putting a little bit of air in that syringe ahead of time. So I push every drop of my treatment stuff into the dog's joint so that I'm not doing anything, leaving anything outside of it. How much can you inject into a joint? That's going to depend on the size of the dog. So here's a rough guideline. Steroids. You know, can we put in steroids? Yes, steroids come with side effects. The biggest one is cartilage degradation. If you're using locals in joints, usually not for arthritis management, but maybe around the time of surgery, please don't. Really, they only cause more cartilage damage.